adequate records. And so the bond attorney came and said, last minute, said, you know what, you'll have to issue this debt at uh, taxable rates. So we still saved them money, but uh, their, their ultimate goal was they just wanted to get out of all the annual reporting requirements. Questions for Jim? I went over my 30 minutes. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, Good presentation, right. though. Oh. <laughs> no questions. So anyway, great news on your rating. So uh, I know you, you won't forget that. And I think it's always important to uh, keep thinking about how to improve that and also just to be aware of um, your policies and procedures and ask yourself, okay, uh, will this positively impact our rating or could it negatively impact our rating? And things that negatively impact your rating would be if you allow that debt service coverage, say, to drop 1.5 times, um, drop below that, or if you allow your cash to drop um, significantly. So you definitely want to keep up on your rate studies and then think about um, what your future debt is and then plan for that ahead of time um, so that you can build in those rate increases well before you issue the bonds. Jim, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. I got a stack of cards here. <laughs> On the front, too. <laughs> but yes, I will take one. Okay. His card's have Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm not the Nelson. It's I head up the public finance uh, division. I've been in the business 25 years, but okay. it's a coincidence. Uh, my birth name's James Martin Nelson, and I didn't tell them what the M store M stood for until after they hired me. So, awesome. All right, awesome. awesome. Yeah. Pardon me. So I thought maybe you were working for Dan. Yeah, I know. I, I keep uh, asking when the adoption papers are going to go through. <laughs> Fifteen years later, I haven't seen them yet. So, <laughs> thanks again. Take Thank care. You. Have a good. Thank evening. you. Thank you. Okay. Bridget, are you ready? We are. We are. Come on up. You're the next oh. contestant. One of, as we get ready for the uh, for the budgeting sessions um, and some of the workshops to deal with that, one of the things that we've done is uh, asked three of the groups that are currently receiving from some of the city, the uh, the Children's Home Society, the Humane Society, and the Community Education to come in and do some short presentations for the council on how they utilize those funds, what programs that they, they provide, and that type of stuff. So this is the first of three. So I don't know how many of you there are. I think I may going to see nine. You've got plenty. Okay. So I learned a lot by sitting here listening to the bond rate. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I will understand way more now. It is interesting because most of us have no idea what goes into this, uh, the decision to go out and pay extra money. It's probably one of the reasons why we truly appreciate receiving money from the city of Washougal. The rest of my time spent writing grants and trying to find little pieces of money for different programs. So it's a pleasure to come here tonight. I'm Bridget McLeeman. I'm Regional Director for the Southwest Region Children's Home Society. And Renee is the Family Center um, Coordinator across the street here at the East County Social Services Building. Can you hear me down there? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I put in the um, folder I handed around was I wasn't quite certain what sort of information you would like, so I started at the beginning and ran right the way through. I noticed there are some new members of council here since last time I was here. And, and maybe uh, you're not as familiar with the history. There's been a long history of a social services center. I think it was part of the county's initiative to have a North County, East County, and a main social services building. And 
we moved in as a partner with um, the Unified Family Center, which was a group of local people who really did an amazing job struggling to provide the services at the center and at the community church of God. And, um, they were really running into it with things like infrastructure and liability insurance and things like that because they were mostly raising their money having G Creek fundraisers every weekend and they were really pretty exhausted and but we really have to thank Gail Byron Brian Brian I can never pronounce her name who is still active in the community and always finds new initiatives to get involved in um, so that was when I became involved, and I think that was in about 2003. So we've been out here since then, and we've really seen big changes at the center. As you all know, you've all been involved in uh, the CDBG projects that have changed the center significantly. But ever since the beginning, our primary goal in, in being there was to increase access to resources and services for families in the Washougal community. It's very hard to access things that are always in Vancouver. Um, information that we can get out here, we get out here. If we can help people fill in forms, if we can connect them with the right resources, if we can encourage other direct service providers to move into the center and provide the services here, that's what we like to do. And the more services we ourselves can provide, the better off it is. But one of the key things that's really <coughs> hard to fund is the central person, and, and that's Renee, who coordinates the center. And that's the primary function of the city funding. The city has provided uh, a revenue of, I think it's been $10,000 each year. And the city of Camas has provided us, it used to be 9,000 and it's now at 7,500, which I still think for both cities is an incredible investment and in resource out here. Uh, because that's the really hard thing to fund and we can go get um, some funding for a program. Um, this year we got uh, $10,000 from Boeing to do some triple P parent coaching out here or um, <clears throat> the library still partners in doing story times down in the basement. CMA comes in and does WIC services, things like that we can get. But that face that creates the connection with families and can talk to them and find out what they need and how they can help, that is the very hard thing to fund. And it's also hard, the amount of WIC that's involved in coordinating a number of partners uh, it sounds like you just have partners, but really coordinating schedules and keys, volunteers, <laughs> that sort and of drives. thing. And drives. So I uh, maybe rather than just saying, I'll work through this document. It provides you with some background. Uh, the, we've been we were first out in uh, Stevenson with a receiving home back in 1944, I think it was, and uh, 1920. Yeah, 1922, and then we moved to Vancouver in 44. So we've got a long history of being in this community. Um, so uh, we've changed a little. Uh, we Children's Home Society started out with a focus on adoption and, and placing children. The motto was a home for every child and a child for every home. And, and as we've worked through the years, uh, adoption has changed a little bit. Um, we do much more interventions to help children stay with their families, making sure the family has